Welcome back to the course on audio signal processing for music applications. Last week, we discussed some applications of the spectrum modeling techniques that we have been presenting in the course. Applications that were related with sound transformations. This week, we will cover another type of applications, the ones that relate with describing sounds. In this uh, first lecture, we start by talking about spectral-based audio features. So we'll start by presenting what we understand for audio features and then uh, talk about the audio features that uh, can be extracted from a single frame of a sound, from a single spectrum of uh, the analysis. And then we will uh, discuss about uh, audio features that require more than one frame, that requires uh, a series of frames, a segment of a sound, in order to be computed. This is a generic uh, block diagram of the extraction process of audio features based on spectral analysis. We have seen uh, this uh, diagram before. Uh, we start from uh, our signal X, then uh, we window a portion of it with a window, and uh, then we compute the spectrum using the fast Fourier transform, resulting into the magnitude and phase uh, spectrum. And it's from here that we are then extracting relevant features of the audio signal, features that hopefully are of relevance to a particular application. There are many types of features that can be extracted from audio signals and many algorithms implementing their extraction. In this class, we will use Essentia as the software tool to extract uh, the audio features. Essentia is an open source library for audio analysis developed and being maintained at the Music Technology Group in Barcelona that contains algorithms for a large set of music descriptions. In, uh, in the programming lectures, we will explain how to use Essentia and you will have the opportunity to learn how to use it. Here we just present some of the most uh, common descriptors. So in this uh, slide, uh, you see some of the descriptors that are available in Essentia grouped into uh, some categories. So for example, we have uh, features that are extracted from the spectrum, so what we call spectral descriptors. And here uh, we have things like bar bands, mel bands, or the MFCCs that we'll talk about, LPC, et cetera, et cetera. There are a lot of uh, features uh, based on uh, spectral characteristics of the sound. Another group of features are extracted directly from the time signal, from the time domain uh, representation of the sound and here we can of course talk about the effective duration of a sound or we can talk about uh, descriptors like the zero crossing uh, rate. Another group of uh, descriptors relate with pitch related information. Typically they are also uh, using spectral based uh, techniques and here we can talk about pitch salience or we can talk about uh, what is called the HPCP or the harmonic uh, uh, pitch class profile uh, type of analysis or identifying the key of, uh, of uh, sound, etc. Then there is a, another uh, group of descriptors that relate with rhythm uh, type of descriptors. Again, some might be implemented in the spectral domain, some are implemented in the time domain and uh, here the idea is to identify things related with the beat or the tempo or the onsets of the sound. Then we have a group uh, some descriptors in what we call sound effects uh, that uh, relate more with a standard type of uh, sound characteristics like the attack of a sound or uh, the things related to uh, the, the energy of, uh, of a particular sound that uh, may be of use for some uh, descriptions. And finally, uh, there is some higher level description, the descriptors that uh, attempt to describe higher concepts of uh, sound of music, uh, things like uh, densibility or the complexity of a sound. Uh, some of these descriptors are a little bit more complex uh, to be computed. They are not just uh, simply uh, computing something from the spectrum. So most of the features or descriptors are computed one frame at a time. Uh, so let me now uh, discuss uh, a few examples 
uh, of uh, these descriptors so you can get an idea of how to go about that. So we'll first uh, talk about the descriptors that relate with energy. Uh, then uh, we'll talk about descriptors that relate with the spectral shape of a sound and this includes the spectral centroid or what we call the MELF, uh, MELF frequency capsule coefficients. And then uh, let me uh, present uh, two uh, descriptors or two features that relate with pitch related information. One is, a call, is called the pitch salience and the other is uh, what we call the chroma uh, features. So the energy of an audio frame uh, can be computed from the magnitude spectrum, can also be computed from the time signal. In the magnitude spectrum, uh, we do it by summing over the square of the magnitudes. So the first equation here uh, shows that. So we are summing over the square of every uh, magnitude spectrum of the sound. Another energy-related measure is what we call the RMS, or root mean square, and that's a modified version of the energy, is the square root of the arithmetic mean of the energy. So it's a, another uh, way to uh, visualize or to at least uh, compute uh, the energy of the signal. And then finally, uh, there is another uh, feature or descriptor that is implemented in Essentia, which is uh, called the Stevens power law, which is a, a, a proposed measure that uh, tries to emulate a more perceptual kind of uh, view. So it, it tries to uh, emulate the perceived intensity. And this is done by using the sound pressure level of a 3000 Hertz tone as a way to perform a perceptual normalization. Uh, this is a very simple measure of uh, loudness, so we call it loudness. Uh, strictly speaking, if we uh, have to compute the perceived uh, loudness of a sound, we have to uh, develop more sophisticated uh, algorithms for that. But anyway, this is a first approximation to the concept of uh, a perceptual uh, measure, in this case, uh, the loudness. And in here we see these three energy-related uh, features. Uh, as they have been computed from uh, our piano sound that we have been listening before. So uh, we have the time information, so we are analyzing uh, these uh, measures uh, throughout the whole sound, uh, one frame at a time, and we can see that they are very much correlated, of course, uh, they are all energy related, but uh, there is uh, quite a bit of difference between these three uh, measures. And clearly we can have uh, other measures related with energy, maybe more related with perceptual issues that uh, might result into a different uh, type of functions. But this is quite useful for uh, measuring uh, energy or uh, loudness related things of uh, a complete sound. So now uh, we talk about a descriptor, a feature that tries to characterize the spectral shape of a particular sound. This is the spectral centroid, which indicates where the center mass of the spectrum is. Perceptually, it is very much related with the impression of brightness of a sound. And it is calculated as the weighted mean of the frequencies present in the signal. So this equation that we see here uh, sums over the whole spectrum, weighting it by uh, every frequency and uh, normalizing it by uh, the total energy. So we have a measure, and we can see that in this uh, plot, that we can see as the sound varies in time, how the brightness changes in time. So this is uh, the sound of a speech. We also have heard this speech before. It's a male speech. And below it, we see this uh, spectral centroid. So the values are frequencies, so it's the center of the spectrum, the, the mass, the center uh, point of the spectrum, as it changes in time. So we see here that this speech uh, sound varies in between uh, 1000 Hz and 7000 Hz. And uh, the noisy parts, and in fact the, the silence, uh, clearly has a high centroid, and the voiced parts of the sound have a much lower uh, centroid. So this is a, a good measure 
that can be used uh, to characterize uh, quite a bit uh, of uh, quite a few aspects of the sound, in particular this idea of uh, brightness. Um, another uh, feature that uh, attempts to characterize the spectral shape but in a more complex way, uh, so the spectral shape of a sound, is uh, what we call the MEL frequency capsule coefficients. Uh, and we normally use the abbreviation, we uh, say MFCCs. The MEL uh, frequency capsule coefficients is a representation of the magnitude spectrum and it is computed by taking the cosine transform of the log magnitude spectrum on a scale that is nonlinear, on a scale that uh, is called the MEL scale. So this equation shows that, so it shows how we uh, take every spectrum, uh, a, uh, x sub L uh, of k, and then we multiply by a uh, filter bank, so we multiply by a window, so that uh, we keep changing this weighting uh, uh, for every frequency in a way that is dependent on this MEL scale. Uh, and this, uh, the attempt of that is to do a more perceptual base weighting of the magnitude spectrum of the result of the FFT. And then we do the log of that, and finally we do uh, the discrete cosine transform. And the equation of the discrete co cosine transform is uh, here too. And we see the block diagram of this whole process. So we start from the magnitude spectrum, then uh, we uh, split this magnitude spectrum with this uh, bank uh, of uh, filters or bank of uh, portions of the spectrum according to uh, this MEL scale. Then we take the log uh, 10 of that and then we compute the DCT. And finally we obtained these, uh, these coefficients, the MEL frequency uh, coefficients. Uh, the MEL scale approximates the frequency resolution of the auditory system. It uh, relates the perceived frequency, or pH, of a pure tone to its actual measured frequency. We humans uh, are much better at discerning small changes in pH at low frequencies than at high frequencies. So, by incorporating this scale, uh, we are making the spectral features much more closely with uh, what we actually hear. So in this uh, diagram uh, we see this uh, function, the, the MEL scale, and the horizontal axis is the linear scale, and then on the vertical as axis is this new scale, this uh, modified uh, frequency scale that, as you see, puts more emphasis on the low frequencies, and on the high frequencies it puts less emphasis. So this is the redistribution that we do of the frequency components and the energies of these frequency components in the MFCC analysis. This is a visualization of the MFCC analysis of uh, this same speech sound that we saw before, the male speech. The, the resulting uh, representation, which is this, uh, this uh, plot uh, below, is not so intuitive. In fact, uh, the issue is that every coefficient um, is uh, a, a representation of a different level of abstraction of the spectral shape. And uh, th therefore, it's, uh, it's, uh, it has to be clearly distinguished from what we would consider a normal uh, spectrogram. It's quite different. Um, so here, for example, we see the first uh, 12 uh, coefficients. Uh, we can uh, choose a number of coefficients. Uh, 12 coefficients is a quite standard uh, number that is used. And um, the, in fact, the zeroth coefficient is not shown. Normally, we do not display the zeroth, uh, zeroth coefficient because that relates to the loudness or to the energy of the sound and uh, that we have other measures for that. So we normally show starting from the first coefficient up until uh, normally like let's say uh, 12 coefficients. The first coefficient is the one that uh, describes the, the, the bigger uh, picture of the spectrum, so the, the bigger overall shape, and as we go higher up it describes uh, more details, more uh, small changes in uh, the spectrum. 
and so this is uh, normally used as, an, uh, as a vector uh, including all these coefficients at every frame so uh, we have a very compact uh, representation just uh, 11 or 12 values that uh, can capture uh, different aspects of the spectral shape. Let's now uh, talk about uh, some features, some descriptors that relate with the pitch information of a sound. And uh, the first one is the idea of pitch salience. Pitch salience is a measure of the presence of uh, pitch sounds in a signal. This particular implementation of pitch aliens that is available in Essentia starts from the spectral peaks, and we know about that, and from them it computes the salience of all possible pitches uh, present. So it does it by summing uh, the weighted energies found at uh, multiples of every particular peak. So it tries to find the possible harmonics that are uh, present of a particular peak and uh, then it sums all that and it computes this uh, pitch salience per every peak value. Here in this block diagram we see the, the magnetic spectrum, how we find the peaks, we get the amplitude and frequencies of every peak and then we have this pitch uh, salience function which is a quite uh, complex equation and here we just uh, uh, see a very uh, overall picture of overall equation of this uh, computation but basically at every uh, peak and uh, for every amplitude of every peak we apply uh, a weighting uh, function that measures uh, these uh, multiples and measures the energy uh, of all these uh, multiples of the fundamental uh, frequency of a peak uh, being considered a fundamental frequency and then it sums all together and it, it, uh, S, SB is uh, this uh, salience at uh, every beam frequency that uh, we are starting with. So we are, we are uh, basically computing the salience of all possible uh, frequencies being considered as uh, fundamental frequency. And uh, this is uh, the result that we obtain if we only take the maximum salience at every particular frame. So at every particular frame we have many salience values but uh, this idea of pitch salience normally relates to uh, how much of a pitch is present at a particular frame so by taking the maximum of a bit is a, is a good measure of how probable let's say there is a good uh, pitch sound at every particular frame. So this is an orchestral sound is this uh, Chinese uh, orchestra that we have heard before and uh, there are many instruments playing together some are pitch uh, sound, some are percussive sounds so by looking at this, uh, this function, this pitch salience we can sort of visualize and estimate the presence of the pitch uh, sounds in, in every uh, frame and that can be quite useful to characterize uh, quite a number of sounds. And then um, let me talk about another type of feature that is also related with pitch information and this is the chroma feature and in particular we'll talk about the harmonic uh, pitch uh, class profile. But chroma, uh, which is a concept used in music perception and in music theory, is a concept that represents uh, the, the inherent circularity of pitch of organization. Uh, the same pitch notes in different octaves have the same chroma. So when we talk about uh, pitch classes, we refer to all the pitches that have the same chroma. And uh, the HPCP, uh, the harmonic uh, pitch uh, class profile, is a particular implementation of this idea of uh, chroma features. And it is a distribution of the signal energy across a predefined set of pitch classes. So um, the idea, and this equation shows that, again starts from the spectral peaks, A sub P, and then by applying a function to that, and summing over all possible peaks, we can get a measure of uh, the different 
pitches that uh, are present within a particular octave. So the idea of chroma is that we fold everything into one octave and we can divide the octave in 12 semitones or in any other type of uh, frequency quantization. And this uh, equation and this implementation basically finds uh, the, the pitches that have that particular chroma, that have that particular, let's say, note name. Um, so this is uh, an example of analyzing uh, a sound uh, with uh, HPCP implementation available in uh, Cynthia. Uh, this is the cello sound in which uh, uh, I played uh, two notes. In fact, let's uh, listen to that. Um, so in here, uh, what we see is, uh, is uh, basically the, the pitches, the pitch classes that are uh, present in this, uh, in this fragment. Uh, this is a, a fragment in which I play basically two strings, a double string, in which one is very stable, the low note, and in fact uh, the zero value that we see here, the more red uh, horizontal line relates to one of these very stable pitches, uh, which is the, the basically is the A sound that is uh, always uh, present. And then uh, what uh, we see is uh, the other pitches. There is a very strong uh, D sound that is also present throughout. So we see it uh, all throughout. And we see also the other notes a little bit. It's not very clear but it gives us an idea that there is some uh, clear pitches and uh, we, by tuning it uh, a little bit we could get quite a decent view of the pitch classes not the absolute frequencies of the pitches but the the pitch uh, classes or the notes that are uh, present in this uh, recording okay now uh, let's go to uh, multiple frames so features that require to be analyzed with uh, multiple frames and uh, let me give you uh, just uh, three examples of things that we could do with multiple frames. One is the idea of segmenting uh, an audio recording and identifying onsets, for example. Another is to find the prominent pitch, and for the prominent pitch we need to see the continuation of the pitch. And finally, uh, the idea is that we can compute uh, the statistics of the single frame features, but on a larger scale, on a, a fragment of a sound. So the, the segmentation of a, of a recording, and for example, identification of the onsets, uh, can be uh, obtained by calculating some spectral features that measure the change in, uh, in frequency, uh, uh, frequency content. For example, the spectral flux, which is a very common feature used in segmentation, what it does, it uh, compares uh, two uh, consecutive uh, spectra and then it, uh, it sums over all these uh, differences. Uh, this is basically the L1 norm of uh, these uh, differences. And this can give a, a measure of the spectral variation. And this uh, can be an indication of where things are changing in the sound. There are many implementations of uh, this idea of a spectral flux. And uh, we can uh, develop uh, variations that can focus on a particular aspect. For the particular case of uh, identifying the onset, so segmenting the sound by uh, finding where uh, the beginning of an event or of a note uh, starts, there is uh, a number of features that we can use. Uh, in fact, the spectral flux could be used for that. But here I have uh, put another feature, which is uh, the high frequency content. So what uh, this uh, descriptor does is uh, find uh, the content, the high frequency content, so how much of the high frequencies are present, and then we compared with uh, the previous one. So in the case of identifying the onsets, clearly an onset is uh, a part of the sound in which there is uh, an increase of high frequencies. Most uh, attacks uh, represent uh, a higher presence of high frequencies. So if we identify where we have a uh, an increasing uh, presence of uh, high frequencies, we can detect where the onsets are. 
okay and this is an example of the results of running these two uh, feature analysis on again on this uh, speed sound and uh, one is the spectral flux so the the red uh, line is the spectral flux and the blue line is the normalized onset detection so the, the both are normalized so we don't see the, the absolute values of them but with them by looking at them and if we uh, we basically zoom into this function we would see that uh, it uh, detects or it has a higher value at the uh, frames or at the fragments of the sound that are uh, a transition uh, portion of the sound so all the attacks and in the case of the spectral flux we also can see uh, uh, sort of uh, changes in the 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 case or the ending of uh, of the notes okay another uh, feature uh, related with pitch is uh, this idea of uh, predominant pitch and uh, this one that uh, in fact we introduced when we talked about F0 detection in week uh, 6 is uh, a measure of the predominant pitch uh, within a more complex uh, sound and uh, we don't have time to, to go into details of that but uh, basically this feature um, uh, starts again from the magnetic spectrum and then finds the peaks and then computes the pitch salience that we have seen before and from this pitch salience uh, it tries to identify different pitch contours it tries to identify different pitches that are evolving in uh, a particular uh, sound fragment and then out of those it selects the one that is uh, is the most prominent one okay so in this case uh, we have this uh, sound that uh, again we have uh, heard before which is a carnatic uh, piece of music in which uh, there is a uh, accompanying instruments and the green line is the prominent melody that has been obtained and again this is an algorithm that is present in Essentia and uh, can be used for identifying the prominent melodies in uh, complex uh, signals. Okay, and finally, um, most audio uh, frame uh, type of features can be aggregated over uh, a complete recording or over a fragment of the sound. And we can compute uh, the statistics to get uh, a view of these more uh, overall type of behavior of a particular uh, um, uh, audio feature so we normally what we do is uh, we compute the moments of uh, of the particular feature and uh, the first moment would be the arithmetic mean so we get the mean of a particular uh, feature or we can get the second moment which uh, corresponds to the variance so, so how it uh, it varies this uh, particular feature uh, and then finally uh, the skewness which is the third moment which is a little bit more uh, analyzing the distribution of this variance so how this uh, feature is uh, deviating from uh, kind of a, a, a normal or a, a Gaussian type of variation so with these three statistical measures we can get a pretty uh, good view of uh, how a particular audio feature is uh, evolving or is behaving in a particular fragment or sound recording. In terms of uh, references, uh, there are many references on uh, the topics uh, that uh, I discuss in this lecture. For uh, the actual uh, descriptors uh, that uh, we mentioned, Essentia is a good starting point. There is documentation on the, on the website of Essentia. Uh, that uh, then it links uh, to uh, the articles or the where the particular uh, algorithms were obtained from. In Wikipedia you can find a lot of information about uh, these things and uh, here is just a few links of the features that I talk about. Uh, so spectral centroid or the MFCCs or loudness or the HPCP or um, the idea of uh, detecting onsets and the uh, moments, uh, the mathematical moments that uh, 
we also mentioned. And finally, uh, the code that uh, showed the plot, so that may be also a good uh, starting point to understand some of these things, are available on the SMS Tools uh, GitHub uh, location. And that's all uh, for this lecture. Uh, we introduce uh, the application of sound and music uh, description by discussing uh, several audio features that can be extracted from audio signals and that can be used uh, to characterize sounds. In the next uh, lecture, we will continue on this topic by extending the idea of characterizing a sound to the idea of characterizing collections of sounds. So I hope to see you then. Bye-bye.